Okay? Not only that, and as smart as the devil may be at times, he's, he's stupid crazy, but he is wise in the ways of the world and in the ways of trying to trip up people. <clears throat> but at the same time, no matter what all he's learned, Jesus knows more and we have his mind. Yeah. Right? Now, just because we have his mind, it's just like we have the armor of God. But if you haven't put it on and don't use it, you might as well not have it. And it's the same thing with the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. But if you don't access that mind and function in that mind, it, you might as well not even have it. But if you have it and you're functioning in it, then you have to learn how to access it. And then you have to do that consistently. Right? And when you do that, you will start seeing wisdom. See, most people start in the middle of a battle. I mean, they, they, you know, they run to God sometimes you know, when they're unsaved. Man, all hell breaks loose against them. And to get some relief, they run to God. Sometimes they run to God, God helps them, and they stay. Sometimes they run to God, God helps them, and then they kind of go back after the battle is over, and they kind of just fade away. And, uh, you know, we used to, when I was a CO down, or corrections officer down at the Walls Unit, uh, we saw a whole lot of jailhouse religion. I mean, a whole, you, you would, I'm telling you, I don't know of another place where more prayer is going out than a prison. That may sound strange, but let me tell you, a lot of people get religion whenever they're incarcerated, right? And they're crying out to God because mama taught them, well, you know, when you need help, call on Jesus, and they will do that. And then sometimes when they get out, they go right back to the stuff they went to before, and they forget God. That's why they call it jailhouse religion. It's only good in jail. And so that's how many people function. That's how people in the world function a lot of times. And so we have to realize that if, when you, so whenever you come to God in the middle of a crisis, then at that point, then he starts bringing you out of that crisis. Now, he doesn't want to deliver you from crisis after crisis after crisis. That's why he gives you the mind of Christ. Why? Because the mind of Christ, yes, it can help you get out of crisis, but the primary thing about it is that it will give you wisdom so you can see the crisis down the road and avoid it. That's the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is not always having to fight. And it's kind of funny because even some of that has bled over into uh, human thinking, okay? Uh, the best, uh, you know, really the, the, the ultimate achievement of a military strategist is to win without a fight. Now, the enemy knows that, and so he tries to do that. He tries to work on you in that way. But the mind of Christ can also teach you how to avoid some fights. Now, some fights you need to fight. Some fights, you need to run toward that giant. <clears throat> and if you run toward your giant, as Mark Hankins always said, don't run with your mouth shut. <laughs> right? You run at your giant with your mouth open, and you're telling him what God's going to do through you to him. And so that's, a, that's a, always a good way. And, but now there are some fights that you don't have to fight. There are some things that, honestly, sometimes we just shoot ourselves in the foot and wound ourselves. And we we've not only fight battles we don't have to fight, but we hurt ourselves in the process. And so the keys here is that to learn these basic principles and to realize the reality. Now, again, if you don't hear what I'm saying and you think you hear something else, then, yeah, you could end up paranoid and fearful and all that kind of stuff. But that is not what I'm saying. I'm here to tell you that you are more than a conqueror, just like we just said. But to be more than a conqueror, you have to learn how to maintain the victory that Jesus has placed you in. 